another day and another product invented. This time it's on the audio side. I've decided to make the clean amp duo for the Game Gear, so twin speakers. A lot of people don't know the original Game Gear did actually support stereo, obviously through headphones. So when you plugged headphones in, uh, the SP on pin here would change and output stereo to headphones. So this amp not only uses that stereo feature and outputs to two independent speakers, which will now work with our new dual speaker shells, but I've also put a huge emphasis on the quality and tonal range in the speaker. So I've already done a video covering that and comparing them to the original. And this video is just going to show you now how to install this and all these bits about how to get the best possible audio output. One of the things with this amp that I designed on purpose was that if there's any kind of ripple or disturbance on the 5 volt rail, which would interfere with the quality of the audio, this speaker will cut out and prevent bad quality sound coming through. So in order for this to work, we must have super clean 5 volt rails. So that includes most of the time replacing the power and audio cables, which are included free as part of this kit. We're also having a bridge that you will see due to trace issues on the Game Gear. So let's just see how this performs first in a stock Game Gear. So what we have in the kit is the Clean Amp Duo itself. We have two new power and audio cables, which you can buy separately, but we include them for free in this kit because I feel it's pretty much always needed. We've got two new speakers. These aren't the same as the speakers we sell. You'll notice on the back for a start, they say 4 ohm, not 8, and we've had them designed to have much more tonal range. So don't go using the other speakers, they won't work anywhere near as well. You get an extension lead so that you can plug this into one of the speakers, doesn't matter which, and you just connect it like so. And now you have a long wire that will reach the other side of the shell. You have an additional bracket to mount the speaker. These will just be random colors as I work through the stock. These come with every button kit as well, so if you do want a specific color, you can just order a button kit. And then you'll get this little piece of wire. So let's set all them to the side, grab just a working game gear. So this is just one I'm working on at the minute, chuck Sonic in. And for those of you that just want a plug and play solution, this is still plug and play. But what you'll see is you won't be able to get the full audio volume range due to, in essence, a poor trace from the 5 volt input over to the 5 volt speakers on game gears. I've found pretty much every game gear has a really poor trace route. So you'll see that in a moment. And let's turn on. And for a full comparison of sound quality, obviously check out the other video I did. But here's the issue. If we turn up full, you can now see you get cutting out. Turn it down slightly and it's gone. So you can use this kit just as stock and not turn it up full. But let's see what the issue is and why this is happening. The five volt comes from your power board. Comes down these wires here, which are all twisted and old comes into the harness connectors here, it then works its way through an inductor, which is either here or down here on certain revisions. And then that inductor goes all the way through, past some thin traces all the way around and works its way to the audio cable here going into this M1 pin. But the problem with this is the trace coming off the connector is not the best quality. So if we want to see an example of that trace, if you go to retro6.wiki and schematics, and then click the easy EDA link, we can now follow the traces. And if we hide the ground so we can see, it basically comes through this connector, through two vias, through this power plane in the middle of the board, this brown color, through the inductor here. So that's that inductor we saw. And then this trace, as you see here, goes all the way around the edge of the board. But if we take a look at that trace, so we just hide everything else. You can see it just basically runs along the edge, goes really thin, which is then a change in impedance, goes all the way around the board in a massive loop and makes its way to the connect. Now the problem with this is it's just a giant loop. There's changes in impedances. There's no capacitance this side of the line. So any current draw has got to be sourced from a capacitor over this side. So what you end up with is the capacitor here that isn't even on this board, but it wouldn't make much difference anyway. This capacitor is the only thing adding to the line. It travels from here all the way around, inside the board, all the way over, all the way up, and all the way to here, and then through this wire. So instead of just presuming what's going on, why not actually see it on the scope and you'll see what's going on. So I'm just gripped on ground over here, and we'll probe on M1 like this. Then if we turn the console on, you'll see there's the 5 volt rail, and there's Sonic Plane. And then as we turn up the volume, you can see these skips. So if we zoom out, turn the volume down and you can see this dip here. And then once the dip's too much, the amp will cut off due to not wanting to compromise on the audio quality. So if we just change this to AC and let's get some ripple going so we can see 
what ripple we're talking about. You can see we're talking half a volt, which is a lot. If I turn the volume up, you can see that goes to nearly a volt. And you can see here at the extremes, it's dipping to basically four volts, which is not good enough. So what do we do to fix that? Well, there's a really simple solution and it just involves the wire that comes in the kit. All we want to do is link M1 with the five volt input. So we can go on say this test pad here. And we're just gonna link over the top and when it's in the shell, it doesn't interfere with anything. It works on original screens as well as uh, clean screens. And so we're gonna solder one pin to the five volt pad, which is effectively this one. And all these pinouts are on retro6.wiki if you're unsure. But the first two pins of the power are five volt and five volt. Then we'll just bring this wire over and we can solder this to M1 here. And that's the only change we've done. You can then tuck this wire in once it's in the shell. So you typically go up, across, and then tuck in however you like. And now let's just grip on the ground again. Probe on the same M1 pin. Press start. So if you remember this is, uh, we can even add a reference voltage to be honest. If we just go to reference waveforms and add number one and then click play. You can now see that's what was happening before, this faded line. We turn the console on now. You can see there's the 5 volt rail coming in and there's Sega playing. This is the exact same volume that it was just cutting off at. Now if I turn up fully, you'll notice it's still dropping and then eventually will cut out as well. So even though we have reduced the ripple significantly, we've still got half a volt there. Now just remember this board doesn't even have a capacitor on here. It's just simply missing the capacitor. So I'm just going to chuck one on here. Just one I have to hand. So that's just now got a standard 100 microfarad cap on. And let's take a look again. And we'll leave the amp at full volume. And you can see there, that's improved again. And it no longer cuts off. Effectively, all we need is a stable 5 volt rail that doesn't drop more than about half a volt. Otherwise, you will get the voltage cut off. What you will find, though, is that often these wires cause more issues than the capacitor so i've already done tests on this and you can run this console without this cap even on no capacitance on the rail because the amp has the caps and you simply need to replace these with new ones if you don't want to go ahead and replace these and you're not that fussed you could just wire straight from the 5 volt of the power board so this pin down here to the 5 volt of the audio board which is the pin closest to the curve so 5 volt is here the square pin you could just bridge, instead of this wire down here, you could just bridge the wire from here to here and bypass all of these wirings and it would just simply work and be stable. But ultimately the cause is you need a stable five volt rail for the best audio. Doing this bypasses this inductor, but if you want to keep the inductor in line, you'd have to short to the other side of the inductor instead of the five volt. And then you'd have to add the capacitance such as this to this side of the inductor. But honestly, you don't hear any noise from this and it's a nice simple solution. So in short, you just make sure you bridge the five volt rails to give it a nice stable path. Make sure you've got your capacitor on here and ideally replace these ribbons as well from the kit. So let's set that aside a moment and check out how we install it in the shell. So all shells are going to be dual speaker as default. And if you don't want one of the speaker positions, you just simply leave it empty. And on the website, I'll update the images as they come in stock. So if you see dual speaker holes on the product page of that shell color, you will get a dual speaker. So it's as simple as putting your speaker in here and that's that one secured. And then take your other bracket that came with the kit and do the same on this side. And this one works better being installed upside down like this, with there only being one screw hole. And then with your wire hooked around, there's plenty of room to get to the amp. And when they're in the shell now, they'll sound a lot better. So let's just give that a go. And you can see once the speaker goes in, this just stays out the way so the circuit board can go down. Or you can wrap it back around here to give it something to grip on and then go through like this. And you can see that makes a lovely neat position of the cable and it kind of stays in place. And you can see that's really loud. So this is full volume, obviously. But just so you can see, there's no cutting out even at full volume there. So it's all about getting that nice, clean five volt rail. But what you'll notice here, if you compare side by side to the, say, Clean Amp Pro, how much more body and depth these dual speakers have, as well as the benefits of obviously having stereo audio, you just hear so much more. There's also a headphone amp on this in exactly the same fashion, super clean and super wide tonal range. So you're gonna get the benefit of the duo on the headphones as well as the speakers. 
But honestly, once you put these side by side with just the Clean Amp Pros and all the other speakers on the market, you really do hear way more tones and audio and bass than you did hear on any other speaker. So I really hope you guys appreciate the extra detail taken in the audio and definitely give me some feedback. And if you feel there's any improvements that can be made. Let's just chuck in another random game. Don't know what this one is. It's just got Sega on. And then again, just there's so much more depth and volume to that audio. It really is really nice to hear. So that's it for this one, guys. And I'll leave you to just listen to some of this audio.